Hello once again and welcome to Let's Talk Etiquette. My name is Nathan Wright and I'm the Executive Director of the Etiquette Foundation of Illinois. And I am so pleased again to be with you. But first, let me start by introducing my very special co-host, Miss Georgia Selman. Welcome, Miss Selman. It's good to have you back with us. Thank you so very much, and it's also good to be back. Wonderful, wonderful. We are just uh, with this subject for today. So without any further ado, I'd like to get started. And first, I'd like to invite you to call in. Please call in at 312-738-1060. Please call us. We'd like to hear from you. That's what this show is all about. But now, let's look at what we're going to discuss today. We have a different angle. I'll say angle as opposed to any other way of describing it. The objective here is to take this subject apart, dissect it, separate it, and then put it back together in 29 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it say? It says, etiquette is manners and morals the foundation of behavior in civil society. Ah, ah, Ms. Selman, please, just give us just your reaction to that, to that subject. What is etiquette? Well, as you know, we want to believe and, and we believe that etiquette is, etiquette is having great manners and morals. Yes. And it's uh, showing the absolute best side of your character. Yes. That's what we're promoting. That's what we advocate. Yes. We want people to understand there's a special way that we should conduct ourselves yes. in society Yes. that is acceptable wherever you go. Yes. And we believe that it should start at home, in the home, with your parents, yes. and it should transfer into other entities in your life. Absolutely. For example, school. <laughs> school. <laughs> Let's go there. That's the perfect place to start because the school is supposed to educate. Their, their charter is to educate, to make you, get you prepared for society in every, in every regard, uh, not just math or reading and writing or science or history. It is supposed to give you a broad view of society that you live in and to be educated. To be educated is to be civil or to be civilized. Absolutely. And so civil society, is, the foundation of civil society is etiquette, manners, manners, yes, and morals. And morals, absolutely. And, and this is not a subject that we created, manners and morals, we have a half dozen books just on that subject, yes. so that the society would know what are their obligations as a human being, as a civil person in society. But give us, share some more of your thoughts on this grand, grand subject with our audience. Well, I, I don't want to sound redundant. <laughs> uh, if you've been watching the show, you know that I am gun ho and yes. I am a firm believer on the importance of etiquette. Yes. I believe in eti etiquette education, and yes. I believe that the more we know about it, the more we talk about it, the more we promote it, uh, people will catch on and begin yes. to use those great manners and morals that we are promoting. Yes. And as I said, starts home, starts it should home. go into the schools, yes. it should go into the workplace, yes. it should be a part of your social life, yes. it should be a part of every aspect of our being and yes. of our life yes. lifestyle. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I can't say enough about yes. manners and morals and I have to go <laughs> back to the very, very beginning mm -hmm. that it starts at home. At home. Well that's really where the family is at. The, 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 the foundation of humanity is the family. And uh, that unit of uh, individuals really is at the core of everything that we realize today as society. It is, and the base of it starts with the family. So there's an, a great obligation. But in this time and day, we just don't seem to feel like this is an important subject. Even though we are witnessing all of the degeneracy and the violence and the crime and all the things we witness every day, it doesn't seem like this subject 
is important anymore. It doesn't have any value to the society anymore. And that's where I really have an issue with how we are projecting who we are today without that being part of it. Yes, yes. You know, so one of the things we, we did do, and I want to start with that, but it is by sharing the definition of civil society. And this is right out of Webster's Dictionary, so I want you to be aware that, uh, and I apologize to our viewers <laughs> for the tiny print, but let me get, I'm going to take my reading glasses out and I will give it well, up. Well, basically, <clears throat> it, it, it's, it's just talking about um, um, a common, a courteous and polite, well-mannered, well-bred, gallant, cordial, pleasant, the, the things that we've been talking about for the last yes. several yes. weeks. Yes. Yes. Basically, yes. that's what it is. Yes. yes. Courteous. Yes. Polite. Yes. Well-mannered. Yes. That's what we've been talking about. Absolutely. That's what um, uh, etiquette is. Yes. That's what civility is. Yes. That's what we are, that's what society, we yeah, this we is, advocate. This is what the foundation is advocating. Uh, what is civil behavior? We're advocating that because this is how we define who we are as human beings. Who are we if we aren't civil? I mean, what is the purpose of society if we as members of society, if we as citizens of this society are not civil and do not understand nor appreciate the value that this holds for us as a people and society. We do, I did, look up society. So yes. you, society, a body of individuals living together as members of an organized community to secure their social cultural values in association for political, religious, uh, bene benevolent and economic purposes. Uh, yeah, this is right out of the dictionary. So this is what society is supposed to be. But are we living up to that? Is my question. Not everyone. Not everyone. And no. that's the problem. You have a core group of people that believe in being civil towards one another in our, in our communities and society. Mm -hmm. And then you have uh, another core and group of people who don't even think about no. having good manners <laughs> right. or being a gentleman right. or being ladylike. Yes. We have gotten away from those very, very important behaviors. Yes. Okay. Being a gentleman. Yes. Being a lady. Yes, yes. That, that and was... it's pretty, pretty frightening when you, uh, you have a daughter and you have sons mm -hmm. and your, mm -hmm. your young lady, your, your daughter, is not going to be treated or not treated like a young lady. Yes. And it's unfortunate because our fathers are dropping the ball and not educating their sons, unfortunately, and we see it every day. Yes. And, and these are young men who do have fathers in their home, and yet the fathers, uh, for whatever reason, are not educating their sons about how to conduct themselves in the presence of a lady. You know, I'm just trying to figure out where did the ball drop? Because Great at question. one time, at one time, these manners and behavior, behaviors were very important. Yes. That's pretty much how I was raised. And yes. I'm not going to think that I was only raised, I was the only young lady raised to be a lady. Yes. And, and to have certain expectations from a man, yes. a gentleman. Yes. I'm not going to believe it. But my, my question is, where did we lose civility? Why isn't it still a part and a major part of our society? Well, you, you know, we talked about, I think, two or three shows about the dumbing down of America. And dumbing down is kind of a way of saying to make us less knowledgeable. 
or to make us more ignorant on, given, on a given subject or subjects. And for some reason, uh, the process said, let's not focus on etiquette. Let's not focus on educating a young man on how to be a gentleman. Let's move away from that and not focus, not educate the child in that area. Because a lady, a lady has to know what is to ex be expected from a gentleman. And if you're not teaching our ladies how to be, how a gentleman should treat them, then that is also part of the problem. And we see that practically every day. It's, it's pretty sad, you know? and it's, it's kind of disgusting when you, uh, when you, when it's, uh, these manners and morals, morals are such a part of your upbringing and a part of what you believe in, and you see our society today not promoting it, uh, not teaching in the school systems, uh, or uh, wherever, mm -hmm. it's not being advocated as an important part of our, our, our development or our children's development. Yes, yes. And I think, too, you know, when you look back at our era and before, because, of course, our parents and grandparents highly valued etiquette. Very and, much so. And what it was to be a chivalrous man. And so it was taught in the family, and it was taught in the schools, because even at the stage of my education during that period, that it was taught in the schools. You know, we had not only home economics, we had uh, classes on social behavior. And so those classes covered, you know, that subject as well as any other subject. And as you can remember, in the school, there were certain behaviors, if you were violating any of them, not only would the teachers tell you or correct you, you know, and other students would do so as well. And young ladies would not accept you treating them in such a way if you attempted to be disrespectful Absolutely. or ill-mannered towards another student, a female student. So it was part of that foundation of our education and for whatever happened uh, to us for that next several uh, years after that period, it just seemed to just kind of just dissipate. Dis dissipate. Yeah. And here we are today, uh, the Etiquette Foundation of Illinois is committed to these values because we believe that this is one of the contributing factors as to why we're going through and experiencing the kind of incivility that we see not only just in our communities and in our relations, but we see it on the national level and even the international level. Yes. And so we want to speak out about this and, and inform our listeners that this is a critical subject. We need to rediscover it because it's not going to come from on high down to us. We're going to have to reinvent it, rediscover it from the grassroot level. And we can do that. We can do that. And so I'm so happy to be here with you <laughs> to be able to talk to our audience to let them know that this is a subject as grand as any subject you can imagine. And just think about what you see every night on your news. Just think about if etiquette had been taught in the home. Yes. If etiquette was reinforced in the schools. Yes. Would we be having the kind of things we're witnessing? I don't think so. That's I don't think so. I don't think we would have a 12-year-old involved, involved in the media uh, with a, a serious crime. I don't think right. we would have 14 and 15-year-olds no. involved in the, the media with a serious uh, crime that's been broken. I just don't believe it. I believe if, if parents are taking time to parent their children, taking time to sit down at a certain time of the evening and mm -hmm. have dinner with their mm -hmm. children. That's what we did when I was coming up. Six o'clock, dinner it's was important being to do served. it today. Absolutely. And if, it's, uh, um, uh, if parents took the time, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound like a, you know, oh, there's mm -hmm. a caller, but let me get my, finish my point. I believe if we, if parents, grandparents, Take time yes. with your children 
teach them the manners and the morals that's so important, that's accepted. Mm -hmm. Not reinventing the wheel. No. <laughs> that's expected mm -hmm. in mainstream America. Yes. And that's where you're going to have to present those manners and morals yes. in mainstream America. And if you're not prepared to do that, if you do not know how to do that, yes. you're not going to have very much success you're not. in mainstream America. Absolutely. It's critical, it's yes. crucial that we reinvent yes. those traditional standards and yes. principles Yes that's been around forever, <laughs> yes. forever. Just, Let's take that caller right okay. now. Caller, you're on the air. Hi, I would like to know when and why the rule came about the gentlemen entering a bu building should take off their hats. Well, that was part of the nobility uh, five, six, seven hundred years ago during the Renaissance. It was a way of not just taking your hat off because you, because you were inside, but it was a way of showing that you are civilized, that you are educated. Because the hat was a, a cover for your head, and it was mostly for shade. That's why you have a brim on the hat to create shade, as well as warmth if you were in cold climates. So the hat was a very important uh, object or item to have so when you went inside with the advent of heat, <laughs> a stove inside, you would not need to have the hat on indoors. So you would remove the hat. But it also became part of what it was to be a gentleman. And therefore, when you came inside as a gentleman, you show respect to the homeowner or to the place you had entered by removing your hat. So that's the basic history of why a gentleman should remove his hat when he enters a dwelling of any kind. I hope that answers your question. If you have another, please, if you like a follow-up, you can do so. Yes. Uh, other than a home, when they went someplace else and they had to take off their hat, where did they place their hat? Well, usually you would have a coat rack and a hat rack. I don't know if you've gone into a commercial place and you see a rack that has hangers on it, and then you have shelves above it. The shelves above it was for your bags or your other items, including your hat, to be placed there. The coat rack itself normally comes with a, a place to place your hats. Even in the home, you have shelves in your closet for the purpose of placing shoes or hats or other objects that you have that you wear every day up on those shelves. You're right, but if most places you go now, they don't have a place you know, they don't have a coat rack or they don't have a place for gentlemen to put their hats while they engage in a, an event while they're out. Well, I, 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 think, I think most places, if you go to a, uh, a hotel, you go to a banquet hall, you go to where you check your coats in at, normally those places do have racks in there for you to for your hats to go on. I think, what well, do you think? Yeah, places like that, but I deal yeah. with... Uh, Children, and we're at the park district. We're at the library. Oh, that's a difference. Yes, you know, the young yeah. man to take their hats off, and then they're walking around with their hats. And that's true. Yes. I think I think in in your uh, recreational type of settings, it's uh, it's appropriate for a man to keep his hat on. If you're in the park, or you're uh, at the swimming pool, or something, I don't think it's uh, it's a protocol to have no. to take a hat or a cap off. If it's outdoors, We're speaking especially. speaking in terms of a, a fine dining type of setting mm -hmm. or more social, more, yes, more formal mm -hmm. type of setting. It's just, you know, the proper right. thing to do. Okay, because right. we're always trying to teach our young men when they enter the, the building of the park district or the library or museum to remove their hats upon entering. That's a good, that's a good policy. To get them in the habit, of the boys especially, in the habit of removing their hats whenever they enter a building or a dwelling of any kind. That's a great habit because once he understands the reasoning behind that, he would automatically do it. It wouldn't exactly. even be something he would think about. So that's a good policy. Well, yeah, problem, Please continue that. Right, but 
part of the problem we have is that they then they have no place to to put their hats sometime and like I said we're may at the park district or at the library so they're reading they're writing they're doing things mm -hmm. so that's why I was wondering when did this start and why do they have a coat rack a coat closet or anything like that for them to put their coats sometimes they do sometimes they okay. don't okay well, the hat is not necessary to remain on your head once you're inside. I can lay my hat on right. this table here, mm -hmm. uh, lay it on a chair or wherever I would lay my coat if I'm going to take off my coat. Yes. And so it's, it's not that big a deal. So long as they adhere to taking it off, that shows respect. And, and it shows gentlemen. That's, a, yes. that's what a gentleman would do. Absolutely. Right, I understand it. But like if you're at the library, you're moving around, you're at the park district, you may be going from one area to another. And so that's why it became a real question for me. It's right. like, okay, when this rule was set up, but like you said, there were coat racks and yes. shelves and stuff, but a lot of these places don't have that. Exactly. And you know, yes. we're telling the young men yes. to take their hats off, but then... Yes. They can't participate. You, they lay stuff down and they may lose it, you know. So then yes. we got parents, oh, my kid, <laughs> you know, yes. came home mm -hmm. with no hat. Well, could think of it this way. Part of the child's education is all the way up the social ladder. You see, I mean, here is one level at the social ladder. This is another level at the yes. social ladder and on up. And so throughout his life as an adult, he's going to experience these various social ladders or levels and so there's protocol, there's a certain behavior that's expected of him once he enters. Now, if he's going to the baseball game at the Sox Park, he wants to keep his baseball cap on his head. That's quite okay. That's, that's And that's acceptable. appropriate where, that's mm -hmm. where you can do it. Right. But, right. yes, that's where, it's, that's where it's acceptable. And I think I was kind of thinking in terms of more, something more formal. Yes. But yes. in a recreational facility, a recreational setting, mm -hmm. there may be a, that may be an exception to the to the rule. Yes. Okay. Now, if he goes to church, he certainly is going to take his cap off, even if it's Absolutely. just for a meeting, an informal kind of thing. Absolutely. If he's inside the church, the hat, the cap should come off. Or if he's going on a job interview, the uh, yes. hat has to come off. Yes. So you kind of have to know where, when, and what. Yes. And so don't hesitate. Well, we, always just, we always just tell them when, when they enter a building to remove their hat. And Absolutely. that's a very good policy. Very good policy. Because they are learning, they're learning, you're teaching, and they will automatically do it when it's really, really important to do. It'll Absolutely. just come automatic when they walk yes. into a building because you're teaching them at this level. Yes. They will know that it's appropriate it's, and it's inappropriate not to do it. And that's what we're trying to instill. Those yeah. are the manners and morals that yes. we are advocating and yes. that we are asking parents to get involved with. Yes. You're doing exactly, right. Right. exactly what we are right. promoting. Right. And, and thank you yes. so very much. And lastly, just, just educate your young man on all of the manners. Hats is one of them. And caps is one of them, but uh, all the courtesies, uh, politeness, consideration, uh, those are the kinds of things you want to educate him to be aware of, to be conscious yes. of, because there are going to be opportunities for him to show some consideration to another person. Yes. Or to be polite or to say something kind to a person or something that may uh, show that he is concerned about that individual. This is where our humanity is at, is in our ability to show compassion. And so you want to educate your son to have those qualities because that's at the core of his humanity. And it'll take him far in yes, life. Yes. It will take him far. Yes, yes. Right. So I commend you. I Absolutely. really commend you Absolutely. on your teaching. This, that's exactly what we are yes. talking about uh, with Let's Talk Etiquette. Uh, and that's what we are hoping that we can uh, sell and get through to parents and to yes. adults. Yes. It's, it's our responsibility. Yes. We cannot leave that up to anyone else. Oh, yes. It's manners and morals. The moral part of it is ethics. You know, if he's, yeah. if he's a good character, he, you can't talk him into stealing anything. You can't talk him into bringing harm to another person. Because his ethics would not permit him to do something like that. So this is so, so important to add that to your education of your son. 
manners, good manners, and good morals. You were going to say mm -hmm. something else. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I don't remember, but thank you. <laughs> call, next, call us again, please. Thank you for calling. Yes, Appreciate please. Appreciate your... That was a great call. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Now. Yeah, we want people like that calling and uh, asking us what we think about these issues because that's what we have devoted years of our time to do and to yeah. be able to share with our audience. So call it. Please share the time, <laughs> the day, and the, you know, and let your friends and family know that give us a call if they have a question. We'll try to give you a good answer. And yeah. we're going to be on this subject for quite a while. Absolutely. It's not going anywhere. It's not going. <laughs> that's what Let's Talk Etiquette is all about. It's about trying to educate our, yes. our communities to the importance of good, having good manners and morals. Yes. And you can reach us at this number here, 312-473-2942. Give us a call, please. We look forward to it. And I guess that's going to wrap it up for today. I think we pretty much covered a great deal. We and did, but just it, not enough time. Not enough. <laughs> we need this. This actually could be an hour-long hour show, long show because absolutely. there's so much information yes. and there are so many interested people in uh, wanting to hear from us and yes. hear about the subject matter. Yes. We thank you so very much for calling in, caller. We thank you, listeners, for yes. uh, checking us out. Yes. And uh, <laughs> you have the last word this time, Mr. Wright. Well, I will wrap it up by saying good night. Have a wonderful, safe weekend. And tune us in next week. Good night. Good night.